Yeah, good morning YouTube. So running another discharge test this morning. I uh, wanted to uh, mention a little bit about this eye charger and how I have it set up to work off of the uh, 4S lithium ion pack I have down below. So the eye charger has what synchronous balance charge discharger and what it does is it's got an input here and your output over here and in between here is basically a synchronous boost buck converter so they can take anywhere from 10 to 18 volt DC on the input and then on the output you can charge anything from a single 1.2 volt NICAD up to uh, 10S the lithium pack so you could go up to 42 volts here and that boost buck converter is actually bi-directional so when you're doing a discharge the current is going out that way and down back into the main battery that's powering this now you can't do that if you're using a, like a 12 volt DC power supply you can't pump any power back in there so by default this regenerative discharge is turned off and then there's the temperature you can see the inside the charger it's up to 35 C the batteries themselves are at 19 or 20 and then here's my input voltage I'm bringing in 15.45 volts off of the lithium pack and I'm pumping one amp back into the battery so there's actually one amp of current going back down into the 4S battery pack that I have powering this and I wanted to show you real quick how I have that set up and also to show you that this might look like one of these classic four button RC chargers like an IMAX B6 but this thing is totally different inside and just to show you that here, I don't expect you to be able to read this, but this is the program flow chart for a, something like an IMAX B6. So you have up here, you've got your setup screen. This is where you can turn the key beep on and off and the backlight and all those sort of things. And then here you have your lithium polymer, charge, discharge, balance charge, lithium ion, lithium iron phosphate. Here's your nickel metal hydride, your NICAD, you have your load and save memory uh, functions, and then you have your lead acid. So that's it. That's all the functions on a typical four button charger. Now here's, this is the iCharger 1010, and you can see it's much more complicated. Uh, I'll put a link to the manual in the video description so you can look at this. It's on, I guess, page 7 of the PDF file. So the first thing I've highlighted in yellow here, you can set your input voltage limits and cutoffs. Now in my case, I set this up for the 4S pack and I set 12 volts as the low cutoff and 16.8 as the high cutoff so that way I'm not overcharging the pack with I'm discharging you come in from the program select you have to go all the way through all of these menus you can't go directly here you've got to go increment 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 <laughs> you know and it's it's a long way down here in fact that's way at the bottom you enable regenerative discharge and then you can also say how many amps maximum you want to allow. Forget if it goes up to 7 or 10 amps on regenerative discharge. That's one thing I'm trying to uh, test just to see what sort of maximum uh, current I can get. And then the other thing that the iCharger lets you do is you can do a custom termination voltage so I set the voltage here to 4.0 volts most of the four button chargers like the IMAX and the other ones 
only support 4.2 and 4.1. And then the other neat thing the iCharger has is it has, you know, it's got balance charge, charge, fast charge, storage charge, discharge. They have this discharge plus, which I haven't really done anything with, but they have this cycle feature where you you can do a charge followed by a discharge and you can repeat that any number of times from one up to whatever the maximum is. Now let me show you the one other test that I'm doing here. So I'm using the eye charger to charge and discharge one of these packs here, but I'm also using something else to test the 4S pack at the same time. So let me show you that here. Yeah, so here's the uh, balance cable coming out of the 4S pack that's powering the eye charger. And one option you could do is plug in one of these little three-digit battery monitors in there. And this will alarm at low voltage, things like that. This is a smart battery meter. There's a number of makers, Hobbymate, uh, Tenergy makes one. You know, they're all clones, but they... They support up to, I think it's 7S, yeah, they go up to 7 maximum cells, and then you can set them for different uh, chemistries there, so I have it on the lithium ion. But anyway, what I'm doing is, at the end of every charge and discharge cycle, I can step through the four cells and get the voltage, and I'm recording those, so I'll show you later in the video, I'll look at the... Uh, spreadsheet that I'm keeping with these. Then you can also here, you get the total voltage, the high, the low, and then the, the difference. Let's take a look at the screen over here and we'll see what the uh, trend is on these uh, cell voltages. Okay, so here we are on the spreadsheet where I'm tracking the capacities of the 1S packs that I'm testing and I'm using uh, packs 5 through 8 which are the 4 on the top of my power shelf and what I'm using to power the battery charger the iCharger 1010 are packs 1 through 4 and you can see I haven't done any testing on those since I've brought the power shelf inside I had some preliminary outdoor tests and then now that I've been running these, I've been doing all of these tests using the power out of these four packs. As I showed you earlier, I'm using this cell monitor to monitor the P1 through P4, pack 1 through 4 uh, voltages. And so I started out with a top balance, and I'll, I'll go into that in a separate video. It was a rather involved process but again it's kind of a learning process you know how do you actually balance charge a large 30 amp hour battery pack the one thing you don't do is plug the uh, charger into all four packs and hook up a balance cable and hit the balance charge button that that actually doesn't work <laughs> and I'll, I'll go into that in a separate video but anyway I started out with a pretty good balance charge I don't think it was perfect though I had about 37 millivolts difference so this spreadsheet has the four pack voltages and then I do a minimum maximum and then a difference maximum minus minimum and then I do a total voltage and then I record the cell voltages off of the balance cable at the end of every cycle so I started out I did a 3 amp 1s charge dropped my voltage from 15.8 to 15.19 then I did a 5 amp discharge a 3 amp charge 3 amp discharge and the idea is this would simulate normal daily operation hooked up to a solar charge controller. You start out at the end of the day, you're fully charged, you discharge the pack overnight, 
and then maybe you have a cloudy day and you get a little bit of power back and then you discharge overnight maybe another cloudy day so down here i had the charge cycle shut off because i had one cell drop below my battery management system or bms uh, low voltage cutoff and i'll i'll show you the bms setup in a separate video but anyway it shut off here and when i came in back in the morning i had one cell here at uh, 3.39 volts everybody else was about 3.6 volts so what i did was then i uh, charged up the whole 4s pack without balance charging i just hooked up uh, 16 volts across the pack off off of the i charger charged it all day so this would be like you had a week of cloudy weather your pack was getting discharged then you had a good sunny day brought it back up so everything's tracking pretty well here you can see the differences are usually less than 20 millivolts but the idea is i'm tracking the voltages on the first four groups of cells here and when i get done testing the second group of four cells i'm going to switch and i'll be monitoring five through eight while i'm capacity testing one through four this so here might give me some hints that maybe i should watch pack number four because it was the one here that that shut off and also looking at these for instance look at pack one and two how close they are these two packs are tracking very closely i guess from my preliminary tests here's pack one and two they're within about a hundred uh, milliamp hours what i can tell with this data is if in my subsequent testing if these two packs again come out maybe within one to two hundred milliamp hours then that's telling me how close do i need to match packs to each other to have them track this closely so far that's looking pretty good and it also tells me that my bms is working because it shut off right there yeah so this pretty much simulates the real world conditions you know i'm i'm using a fixed voltage charger you know i'm just putting 16 volts maximum into the battery pack i'm not trying to balance anything i'm just letting the four groups of cells do what they do i'm having the bms in there protecting against going too low or going too high and otherwise just letting the four packs fend for themselves yeah if you have any uh, comments or questions about that post up in the comment section below and i'll uh, try to do an update to this when i get ready to switch over and start monitoring the other four packs and testing these four anyway that's uh, some of my cell voltage tracking uh, information I'll keep recording this data and I'll post any updates when I get there so as always thanks for watching